maximum intensity and minimum intensity. But okay. so maximum intensity. So one suggests repeatedly one minute. So let me revise. Maximum intensity. What is the equation that we obtained at the end of the discussion? So the intensity during this interference, whenever the waves undergo interference pattern, those waves give those waves produce some resultant intensity that is I. So that is equal to initial intensity into that is four pi naught cos square pi by cos square pi by right. Whether this intensity is maximum or minimum, that completely depends upon this RHS part. In that RHS part, this cos square pi by two is more and more important. What is it? See here, if cos square pi by two, this is what you need to understand. So if cos square pi by two is equal to one. Then what happens? I is equal to four i naught. So this represents a maximum intensity. Maximum intensity in that interference pattern. Maximum intensity in the interference pattern. And when do this happen? Okay. So this for this for this whatever the phase angle that is phi we have that should take the values. That should take the values ah, zero. Okay, and if you take pi, not possible because the pi by two it becomes 90, zero it becomes. Okay, so this has to be two pi. Understood? Because cos pi, cos pi is equal to minus one. Minus one means there is also one in the opposite direction. But okay, next four pi, four pi you can take. Given there is another possible value for this pi. Next, this pi can even take one more possible value that is 6 pi and so on. Are you clear with this values how I have taken? Got it? Now, so pi, which is the phase difference, is equal to even number, even multiples of pi. Even multiples of pi. Even multiples of pi. Okay, now half the difference, this is called phase difference. This is phase difference. This is a phase difference. Now, path difference also we need to discuss. What do you mean by path difference? When the wave is propagating like this, look at this, this is the wave, in this wave, right? This is one point, this is one more point. These are the two particles which are in the same phase. Now, from here to here, one complete cycle gets over. So, phase difference is a two point. And coming to length, so what is the length? Length means wavelength over here, distance. That is the So 2 by radians of phase difference corresponds to path difference lambda. 2 by radians of phase difference is equal to path difference lambda. Okay, be clear with this. Be clear with this. But it, okay, so then path difference is equal to this is 2 pi into n, like the theta bridge. So path difference delta is the representation. So this is n into lambda. N into lambda. In this case, what happens during the interference phenomenon, the intensity of resultant wave will be maximum. So this type of condition is known as a constructive interference, we say. This is a constructive interference. This is a constructive interference. Constructive interference. Constructive interference. Out of this constructive interference, you will be getting so bright band, bright band formation express. Bright band formation express. So this is one condition. Now coming to one more condition, that is dark band formation. So for dark band, what happens? Dark band formation you need to take up. Okay, so intensity has to be zero. When intensity becomes a zero, if at all you want to have zero intensity, that is decided by cos square pi by two. Overall, cos square pi by two should be equal to zero. And when will that be possible? This is possible for this. For this, what do we do? Pi should take the values of pi. Okay, so three pi is another possibility. Five pi is another possibility, and so on. That means the phase difference has to be 2n plus 1 into pi. When the phase difference is, this is phase difference. 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 Phase
this difference has to be okay 2m plus 1 pi understood okay the corresponding part difference will be how much 2m plus 1 into ah, 2 pi radians are equal to lambda then pi radians are equal to lambda by 2 so this becomes a lambda by two. so this must be the part difference this must be the part difference why i have repeated once again today okay in the sense that these two results we will be using while discussing the further concepts what are they the further concept is the bandwidth we need to calculate so this and all you have written yesterday okay now bandwidth you need to calculate bandwidth during interference fringe width fringe width okay so in the heading ah, bandwidth during interference bandwidth bandwidth during interference bandwidth during interference okay so look at this again you see the same situation once again i need to show you so this is the primary slit over here which is illuminated by sunlight then the primary wavefront which are spherical in shape they will be just coming out like this now this is the axis right now here i will be placing two slits these are called secondary slits over here so this is the slit s1 and this is the slit s2 now the slits s1 and s2 act as a secondary sources of light secondary sources of light but it, now sec, this is secondary spherical wavelets will be coming out like this and even from s2 secondary wavelets will be coming out like this in this way right now at some distance i will be just placing one screen on here so this is a screen this is a screen that is a screen right the distance between the slits and the screen you just say that is a capital d Understood? Okay, so if now you make the propagation of light rays from S1 to S2, S1 and S2 towards the point O, this is the point O you see. Then, so S1, this light will be reaching over here like this by traveling a distance here. S1 O. Next, the light which is coming from S2 will be just traveling over here like this, S2 O. Since S1 O is equal to S2 O, ah, so there will be no and there's a phase difference that means both things will be in phase. Therefore, it will always bright band formation gets formed. Bright band formation takes place. That means whatever the interference which is taking place, get go, that interference is nothing but constructive interference. That interference is nothing but constructive interference. Constructive interference. Okay. Other than this point, oh, you cannot take. You take a point P over here, right? This particular point P, I have taken at a distance x u. At a distance x u. Understood? Now, so s one P, s two P. If you take these two distances, so they are not same. But the point. So it's very clear that s two P is more than s one P. Am I correct? The means of the light wave coming from s two will have to travel. For more longer distance than that of S1. Means the light wave coming from S1. Understood? So look at this here. You see the light wave coming from S1 has to travel along this path. But at the same time, the light wave coming from S2 will have to travel. So this path like this. So S2P is more than S1P. Right? Now, so what I do is I will be just dropping one perpendicular over here like this. This is the perpendicular. So this is A you take. This is the point A. When I draw perpendicular over here, then what do you say? What do you say? S1 P A P. S1 P A. This becomes one isosceles triangle. In the isosceles triangle, right? Okay, so what happens, sir? Huh? S1 P A P. Both the things will be equal. S1 P A P. Both the things will be equal. S1 P is equal to A P. Right? So S2P is equal to how much? S2P is equal to S plus AP plus S2A. AP plus S2A. Okay, so this AP is what? S1P. So S2P is equal to S1P plus S2A. Therefore, S2A is equal to S2P minus S1P. 
S two P minus S one P. What does this difference give? S two P minus S one P is nothing but path difference between the two light waves. This is the path difference of delta. So this is path difference. This is the path difference. Path difference is S two P minus S one P. S two P minus S one P. But if it, so, what is this S two A? What is this S two A? Let this be the angle that is theta. The distance between the two slits is a small d. I say small d is the distance between the two slits, right? And the angle is the theta. Now this becomes one triangle. Triangle. What is that? S one S two A, right? In the triangle, in triangle S one A S two. So what do you say? Sine theta. Is equal to opposite side, which is S two A divided by hypotenuse S one S two. That is D. Therefore, S two A is equal to D sine theta. S two A is equal to D sine theta. S two A is equal to D sine theta. Understood? Now, so we need to discuss the band width. Band width. Width of the band. So look at this here. What about the band which is getting formed here? So this will be, this may be a bright band or dark band. So they got into the path difference. And if you have the path difference here is n lambda, n lambda, then what happens? The bright band formation takes place. And if you have, okay, so the path difference is 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2, then dark band will get formed. Anything may happen. There is a possibility for both the things to happen over here. Are you understanding? Are you understanding? Right. Now this point B is get a distance x. This point B is get a distance x. Okay. Now in the particular case, look at this sine theta is equal to what did we get now here? Sine theta, sine theta, sine theta is equal to s to a, s to a by b. Right. Yes. So s to a means what? S to a delta. That is the path difference. So path becomes delta by small d. Okay, since theta is too small, since theta is since theta is too small, what happens? This sine theta can approximately be taken as theta. Therefore, theta is equal to delta by d. So this is the equation one you say. Now coming to this geometry, look at this, uh, this is the midpoint, that is what I should take. Right? Now I will be just taking this one line over here like this. So this is the line I am taking over here like this. Now what do you get here? One more triangle you obtain. So this is the right angle now. Right angle, triangle, O dash, O P. In the triangle, O dash, O P. What I do is the tan theta I will take. Tan theta is equal to opposite side divided by adjacent side. Here theta is too small. Theta is too small. Here theta, even here also theta. This is two. Here theta. So that's a, we can show, we can prove that this triangle and this triangle, both of these are similar. Triangle S1, A, S2, and triangle O dash, OP are similar triangles. Similar triangles. Therefore, these two angles will be equal, corresponding angles. So theta. So tan theta is going to get spiny. Again, since theta is too small, what do you write? Theta is going to get spiny. This is the equation two. Now from equation one and two, ah, what do you write? Delta by D is equal to. X by D. X by D. Right? So X is equal to delta into capital D by small. So what is this X? X means that is the distance where that particular band is getting formed. That may be a bright band or no, so dark band, anything. That may be a dark band or bright band, anything. But it, so X is equal to delta into capital D by small d. Capital D by small d, right? Up to here, you note it down. Almost we are at the end. From there's a from here. From this equation, we will get the required equation. We will be getting the required equation. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Yes, over. Yes. X is equal to lambda capital DBS body. Right? Now, <clears throat> if at all you want to have your prime band formation get P, that completely depends upon this path difference, delta. That completely depends upon the path difference, delta. Right? Can I erase this part? No problem. How does that work? Come to the So you believe it. So that's a little comfortable. Yes. Right. So the second procedure is S2A is equal to B sin theta. S2A is equal to B sin theta. This is the path of difference. Now, based on this path of difference, whether bright band formation or dark band formation, that and all will depend. So look at this here, you see, look at this, x is equal to, okay, delta d, okay, by small d, right. Let the band which is getting formed at the point P, that is the nth band, you see. The band which is getting formed at the P is the nth band. Okay, so let the band be the nth one. Let the band be the nth one. Nth one. Right, then what do you write? So, what do you write? X n is equal to delta d by small. Right, now for the formation of a bright band, for the formation of a bright band, path difference is equal to n to n. So, x n is equal to n lambda. Capital D by small 
Okay. Yes, again. Okay, this is to So that's again into lambda capital B by small t. Right? Ah. For the, so for the next immediate break time. For the next immediate break time. Next immediate break time. Then becomes n plus one. So x n plus one is equal to n plus one into lambda capital divided by one. What is the band width now? Band width. Band width. Ah. So that is symbolically represented by beta. So beta. So this, ah. Beta. Which is the bandwidth of fringe width? Beta, which is uh, the bandwidth of fringe width, beta is equal to x n plus 1 minus x. Right? x n plus 1 minus x. Now look at this. Beta is equal to s n plus 1 into lambda capital D by small d minus n lambda capital D by small d. So beta is equal to s n lambda d plus lambda d minus n lambda capital D divided by small d. These two things will get cancelled out. So beta is equal to lambda capital D by small d. This becomes uh, the value. That becomes the, the band width. Understood? So this is the band width of what? Can you tell? This is the band width of what? Band width of what? Band, band width of? Constitutive. 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 Ah, Constitutive. Which band will you get? Right band. So this is the band width of? What does what are you say? Huh? This is the bandwidth of because we have taken path difference. What do you take? What have you taken? Path difference. Path difference, what have you taken, ma'am? Can't you see? Path difference, what have you taken? Path difference, what have you taken? <laughs> Don't cry. Huh? Path reference? Yep. Yellow by is meant for? Right band. Okay. And then there's a, this beta will be the bandwidth of? Beta is the bandwidth of? Tell loudly, confidently. This is the bandwidth of? Huh? This is the, the bandwidth of dark band. You see, XN, yet XN bright band is getting formed. Next immediate bright band, I wrote. For the next immediate bright band, X again plus one. Look at this. Screen. This is the central bright. Next dot. Okay, next bright, next dot, right, okay, next bright, next dot, okay, xn, immediate bright band, x n plus 1, x n plus 1 minus xn, you are subtracting, then what will you get? Understood? Okay, that will talk, that you will get. X n plus 1 minus x n. If at all you make it, okay, that means if at all you take the difference of two consecutive, difference of two consecutive prime bands, that gives you the width of the dark band. That gives you the width of the dark band. Many people have a confusion in this regard. 
Got it? Got it? Okay, so this is since we have taken, so then lambda, which is the path difference for the formation of a bright band. So what about lambda capital B by small d that we obtained, probably that may be the bandwidth of a bright band. People may also make it confused. No, that's the bandwidth of dark band. That is the bandwidth of a dark band. Yes, come on, please make it fast. Right. Okay, now we will discuss something about the width of dark band. Now we will discuss something about width of dark band. Width of a dark band. Keep that in. Width of a bright band. Now, bright band, you are going to discuss. Width of bright band. Width of bright band. Dark band, we have it. Right. Now this is bright band we have today. So bright band in the sense, look at this here you see. So from the central, okay. So this is this one. So you put on the day that this is a dark band over here. So this is P okay. Okay, so this is the central. Right? Now this is this distance is the same. The immediate dark band is getting found over here. So this is what is that? This is X then plus one. X then plus one minus X then. So then we will get this. You will be getting that. Right? Now, two consecutive dark bands we have to take. If at all you want to obtain the width of your there's a bright band, you need to take two consecutive dark bands. Right? The first dark band so can be represented as Xn is equal to lambda here, delta lambda capital D by small d. Okay? Yes or no? So, what is the positive? That's again M lambda. Understood? So that's again lambda d by small d. Understood? Okay, but lambda, okay, that's here we need to so we should not take. So what is the value over here? What is the value? So what is the equation here we got? Delta capital D by small d. Delta capital D by small d. That should be equal to x. Okay. So now so x again is equal to so xn delta. Then the path the difference of a dark band. Okay, so 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2. Ages should not be drawn. Why you? Huh? Ages to put the ages to put it in the ceiling. Okay, ages to never. Okay, so 2n plus 1 lambda by 2. Right? Into so capital D by small. So that's n is equal to. So 2n plus 1 into lambda capital D by 2D. Okay. Okay. So next immediate dark band. Next immediate dark band you put on you take. Next immediate dark band you make. So that becomes x n plus 1 
So this is 2 into n plus 1 plus 1 into lambda into capital D by 2D. Simple in the place of n, n plus 1 we have to write, not for that. that. But it, so x n plus 1 in this particular case, this is 2n plus 2 plus 1 into lambda capital D by 2D. Okay, so x n plus 1 is equal to 2n plus 3 by 2D into lambda D capital. Now bandwidth. Now bandwidth. This will be the bandwidth for buyback. Okay. So beta x n plus one minus x. Beta already have used now for a previous case. Beta dash. Right. So beta dash is equal to. This is 2n plus 3 into lambda capital D by 2d minus 2n plus 1 lambda capital D by 2d. If you simplify this, lambda capital D by 2d, this is 2n plus 3 minus 2n minus 1. 2n, 2n will get cancelled out. 3 minus 1, 2. Therefore, so beta is equal to lambda capital D plus 1. So what is this beta dash? Beta. That means whatever it may be. So during the interference pattern, okay, so bright band formation you take or dark band formation you take, the width of a bright band or width of a dark band, both things will be equal. Both the things will be equal. So lambda capital D by small d, where lambda stands for wavelength of light, which is being used during this experiment. Capital D is the distance between the screen from the slits. Small d that is the distance between the two slits. That is the distance between the two slits. Okay, like that. Okay, so interference pattern as uh, that the phenomenon is over. Interference discussion is over. Now the next property of light that is a diffraction. Next property of light that is a diffraction. Now the next property of light that is a diffraction. Diffraction, this is what we need to discuss now. Even this thing also is very, very important. It is of equal importance of interference. Even this diffraction is of equal importance of diffraction. So diffraction, this is the thing that we need to discuss now. So do you have any idea about diffraction? What happens during this diffraction? During this diffraction, what happens? Anybody? What do you mean by diffraction? Yes. At least. What happens during diffraction? What happens here? 
diffraction during diffraction the light exhibits a kind of bending effect got it okay so bending effect means immediately you may get one confusion so what is that so earlier once we had this type of bending effect where did we come across that bending effect in refraction in the case of refraction light exhibits a kind of bending effect but what about that bending what about this bending we are discussing both of these are quite different okay so this is the bending effect okay so which takes place in diffraction but what kind of bending effect takes place in refraction that is the bending that happens when the light passes from one medium to the other got the point so whenever there is a change in media at the separation of two media light exhibits a kind of bending that type of bending is known as refraction but in the case of this diffraction there will be no change in the medium same medium will be there when the light passes through the same medium light exhibits a bending how is that possible because one thing is true that is a rectilinear propagation of light on the basis of rectilinear propagation of light when the light is passing through a particular medium of uniform density there should be no bending but the point even then you will be getting some bending that comes from okay there's some okay so in the same medium isotropic medium what it is for this there is a condition what is the condition whenever light passes in a medium whenever light comes across any minute objects which are called obstacles which are called obstacles if at all i take this piece of chalk okay so this piece of chalk may not produce a diffraction effect okay and if at all you take very sharp edge in the propagation of light that sharp edge which is taken as a sharp obstacle that exhibits this diffraction effect so what do you understand by means of these two objects which i mentioned in the example what do you understand by means of these two okay things and if i take okay so this thing there is a piece of chalk diffraction you may not be able to observe if you take a very sharp object got the point then diffraction phenomenon takes place that means what do you conclude by means of these two things what about the object that you are going to take up the size of object is very very important whenever the size of the object is very very minute what the point minute in the sense what should be the approximate size size of the object the object must have almost equal size with the wavelength and what is the wavelength what is the wavelength of light the wavelength of light varies from 10 power minus 6 meter to 10 power minus 7 meter this is a okay. so this wavelength range of light which is visible light visible light okay and if at all you observe violet violet for violet so what is the other so wavelength what is the wavelength 4000 angstrom unit so 4000 into 10 power minus 10 meter that is 4 into 10 power minus 7 meter so there is a wavelength and if at all you take red light okay so this is 7000 angstrom unit so that is 7 into 10 power minus 7 meter 7 into 10 power minus 7 meter got it so what about the object that you are going to take up the object size has to be as close as possible to the wavelength of light since the wavelength of light is of order 10 power minus 7 meter what about the object you are going to take the object size has to be microns or even 10 power minus 5 also works out 10 power minus 5 Understood? So very close to wavelength of light. If at all we take any object, if light is interacting with the object, if the corners of the object, what happens? Light undergoes diffraction. Light undergoes diffraction. Look at this. Here you see. So I am taking one source of light over here. Let this be point source. What kind of wavelengths do we get by, by means of this point source? Spherical wavelengths. The spherical wavelengths are given out like this. All these spherical wavelengths are propagated. These are the spherical wavelengths. Okay. Now, in the propagation of the spherical wavelengths, I will be placing one sharp edge over here. Like this one sharp edge I will be placing over here, which is opaque, very sharp, like this. Okay. So this side I will be placing one screen like this. 
Now, yes, per your idea. Yes, per your idea. What's happening, man? Any massages going on? Huh? Sachin, backside. Huh? Okay, so this is here you see. Huh? Okay, so this is Vobek. This is Vobek of Gitch. Understand? Okay, now this is, this is the propagation of the spherical wave things. Now, yes, per your idea. Yes, per the rectilinear propagation of light. Now, what happens? These light wave things cannot pass through this. Okay, so this is through this Vobek of Gitch's shadows. Get formed, shadow formation. So, as per your idea, what should happen here? Huh? So, till there, this opaque object spreads, extends till there. So, there should be no light propagation. The means of only this portion has to be illuminated and this portion should be dark. Is that wrong? Is that wrong? The shadow should begin from here. The shadow should begin from here. But you know what happens? In practical, since this is very sharp edge, what happens here? The moment the light wave frames touch this sharp edge, right? So instead of traveling like that, some portion of light enters in this shadowed region. Some portion of light enters in this shadowed region. The pincer light will be just bending over here. Light will be just bending and traveling like that. And whatever the bending, the light exhibits over the corner, sharp edges. That is called a diffraction. That is called a diffraction. Understood? So diffraction is a phenomenon in which the light exhibits a kind of bending over the sharp edges of the obstacles. Over the sharp edges of the obstacles. That is called a diffraction phenomenon. That is called a diffraction phenomenon. Okay, so these are light waves. Electromagnetic waves. Okay, one thing we have to keep in mind. What is that? Does this diffraction take place even in the case of sound waves? Yes. Even sound waves also obey the diffraction. Diffraction is the property which is applicable for both sound waves and light waves. Whereas interference is not applicable for sound waves. That is applicable for only light waves. So, sound waves obey diffraction in what way? So, let me tell you one example. Let me tell you one example. Okay, now I am talking. Now I am talking. When I talk, so how do you get the mechanism? How do you get the mechanism? See, whatever the sound waves which are coming from my mouth, all the sound waves will be rectilinearly propagating, means straight propagating. Okay, those sound waves will be reaching your ear, those sound waves will be causing the sense of hearing, then you will be able to get my sound. Okay, yes or no? This is a direct propagation and one more propagation also is possible. What is that? What about the sound waves that are coming out of my mouth? These sound waves may be falling on the walls. From the walls, they undergo reflection. Even those reflected sound waves also will be reaching your ear. Okay, so this even this thing also is a direct one we can say. But the question is, uh, now you are in front of me, so that I am looking at you, I am talking to you. Therefore, you are getting my voice. You are getting my sound. Okay, so you put all any person stands there, that's a staircase, or that staircase, imagine. Will he get, okay, this sound? How? But I did not face the film. And what about the sound waves which are coming out of my mouth? These sound waves are not propagating to that fellow directly. Because this, this one is there. This one, he is protecting this. Are you getting my point? Through this wall, sound waves cannot pass. Even then, that person will be able to get my voice. In what way? In what way? So look at this. Here, what about the sound waves? Of course, sir, my face is this side. Means uh, the projection of the sound waves is in this direction. But what about the sound waves which are falling? Okay, on the wall, the sound wave gets further separate. So one sound wave is coming here. One sound wave is coming here. For the sound wave, this becomes a sharp edge. But why? So over the sharp edge, okay, so this is the edge. The sound wave, the moment it comes over here, it will bend. So, what about the bending the sound waves exhibit over the corner? That is known as a diffraction of the sound wave. That is known as a diffraction of sound wave. 
Got it? So diffraction is a phenomenon in which the waves exhibit a kind of bending over the sharp corners. Over the sharp corners. That is called diffraction. That is called diffraction. Okay. Usually, this diffraction is of two types. One is Fresnel's diffraction and the second one is Tom Bokov's diffraction. The first one is Fresnel's diffraction. Fresnel's diffraction. The first one is Fresnel's diffraction. Fresnel's diffraction. Okay, the second one is from Hofer. From Hofer. From Hofer diffraction. From Hofer diffraction. Fresnel's diffraction and from Hofer diffraction. Fresnel's diffraction and from Hofer's diffraction. That is Fram Hofer, not Fram Hofer. Okay, don't say Fram. Okay, Fram is something different. Understood? P R E W E. Okay, send it down. That's what the thing is. Okay. Huh? Don't you know? Huh? Yes. Okay, so Fram Hofer diffraction. Fram Hofer sir, diffraction. Right. What is the main difference between Fresnel's diffraction and Fram Hofer's diffraction? In the case of Fresnel's diffraction, in the case of Fresnel's diffraction, okay, the source and the screen and the slit, all the three things are very close to each other. But in the case of Fram Hofer's diffraction, the source and the screen, both the things are very far away from the slit. <laughs> Okay, very far away. Very far away in the sense that yet what distance do we have to take? Yet larger distances. Usually, what about the light which is coming from the stars? What about the light coming from sun? That light undergoes from Hofer's direction. Okay, so in the previous case, one of the examples I took up, which is eclipse formation. In the eclipse formation, a number of HGM we discussed. It. That is due to from Hofer's direction. That is due to from Hofer's direction. Understood? Usually we so this is a study of this Fram Hofer's diffraction only. Okay, Fresnel's diffraction involves many mathematical integration and other things, mathematical steps. But right? so in this level, the higher level are okay, IIT level. So this Fresnel so diffraction is not there. Yet the higher levels you will come across. But right? okay. Now Fram Hofer's diffraction we need to discuss. In the Fram Hofer's diffraction, the distance between the screen and the switch and the source. All the three things are very, very large. Okay, when these three things are large enough, how to take up this type of diffraction in the lab? In the lab, you can't create such larger distances. But because when the distance is larger, usually what about the beam of light which is coming from distant objects, from distant bodies, okay, the so beam will be parallel beam. Okay, that parallel beam you need to convert as a converging beam. How is that possible? That is possible by means of a convex lens. And if you don't want to take up this from Hofer's diffraction in the lab, you will be using convex lens. You will be using convex lens. Okay, now this is one of the main activities on which we have problems. Even here also, we will come across some equations just like okay. Okay, so Fresnel, he told one thing about uh, the diffraction pattern. According to Fresnel, what he told is a uh, diffraction phenomenon. Diffraction pattern is nothing but interference. Interference of secondary wavelets uh, present in the light coming from the slit, which is unstopped. Which is unstopped. Which is unstopped means which is allowed to pass. Okay, and if you take any switch, the switch will be allowing some light passing through it. Am I correct? That is called unstopped light. In that unstopped light, there will be some secondary wavelets. What about the secondary wavelets which are present in that unstopped light? Due to the interference of those secondary wavelets, diffraction pattern is obtained. That's what Fresnel's explanation is. Got it? So in what way? So look at this, some portions we have to imagine over there. Okay, so this is, uh, okay, so he conducted an experiment which is uh, 
which is a single slit experiment. That is a personal single slit experiment. Single slit. Look at this. In the so interference, young experimenter, double slit with it. But here, single slit we have. Single slit we have. So look at this. Here you see, I will be taking one source of light over here. Now, usually from the source, what happens? The light rays are diverging. So this is a diverging, diverging light rays over here. This is now you need to convert this diverged light rays as parallel beam of light. How is that possible? That is possible by use of a convex lens. Now, so a convex lens we need to use of the So this is a convex lens. This is a convex lens. The moment so these light rays are incident of this convex lens, you can see this is the way how these diverged light rays are incident. The condition is that this point, which is the source has to be that the principal focus of this lens. Focus of the lens. Right? Now, what happens? A parallel beam of light will be coming over like this. A parallel beam of light will be coming over here. Now, in the propagation of this parallel beam of light, you need to place one single slit over here. So this is one slit like this. This complete whole. Understood? So this is single slit. Single slit. Right? Now, on the other side, we need to place one screen. One screen we need to place over here. This is the screen. This is the screen. Right? Now, on the screen, diffraction pattern is absent. And as per your idea, what happens? This light rays must travel like this. Yes, this light wave must have happened like this. Okay, because this is opaque. This is opaque. No light has to enter through this opaque. No light has to enter through this opaque as per the rectilinear propagation of light property. So, on the screen, whatever the central portion that you obtained, this must be the central region which is always illuminated, which is always bright, fringe. Okay, so here, let this place always bright band. Always bright band is absent. Okay, now what happens is some portion of light undergoes a diffraction. So diffraction. Okay, so some portion of light enters over here. But if the light passes in this way, what happens? If the diffraction is affected, okay, you can't observe. That's why what we do is when the light rays are passing like this, right before the screen, we need to place one more convex lens. We need to place one more convex lens over here. And see that the screen has to be yet the principal focus of this second convex lens. This is the lens you one to take, and this is the lens you two. Now, what about the parallel beam of light coming from? The slit which is unstopped. So this undergoes refraction. These light rays will converge with each other. At a particular point, all the light rays will meet. This is the bright band. Now, now did you understand it? This is the bright band. This is the bright band. So this is called central bright band. This is called central bright. Central bright band. Right now, whatever the light which is okay coming after the so diffraction, so this light ray will be passing like this, this light ray will be passing like this, and one more band is updated over here. One more band is updated over here. Understood? So that is uh, okay. Secondary, secondary, maximum, secondary, minimum. Secondary maximum means secondary means second bright band. Secondary minimum means the second, okay, dark band. Okay, so this is the main, this is primary. Except this central bright band, whatever the things which are formed, either that side and this side, all the things are secondary. That's all. Okay, so other than this central bright fringe, all remaining bright fringes are secondary bright fringes. Okay, all, huh, so dark fringes are taken as secondary dark fringes. Secondary dark fringes. Are you clear at this point? Okay, now the condition for the formation of secondary maximum 
secondary minimum. So the conditions we will discuss over here. Look at this here, you see. So this is just one you take, and this is just two you take, right? Now this is a point P you take. That's why I can double slit experiments. Yes, one P distance, yes, two P distance. You cannot you compare, both things are not same. Yes, two P is larger than yes, one P. Yes, two P is larger than yes, one So, yes, one P. So, it's very clear that yes, two P is larger than yes, one P. And if at all, so look at this here, if at all, you just think of that it is connected. Okay, now if at all, you draw a perpendicular from here. This is a perpendicular drawn. This is yes, one A. So, this is slit with the D uses pointing. And so the distance between the screen and the slit, that is capital D, you say. Capital D, you say. Right? Okay. So you can you draw a perpendicular. Now, yes to A, you got. So what do you mean by yes to A here? So that is nothing but yes to P minus yes one P. That is nothing but yes to P minus yes one P. Right? Yes to P minus yes one P in the same spot. That is half the difference. That is path of difference. What is the path of difference over here? This is theta, you say, in this triangle, sine theta is equal to S2A divided by D. Therefore, sine, that's why S2A is equal to S2A is equal to D sine theta. Do you understand this? Yes. D sine theta. Even in this case, path of difference is D sine theta. Now, what about the light that we are using? The light has wavelength lambda, you say. The light has wavelength lambda. But it, so if you know all the path difference, that is yes to a. Yes to a path difference. If you know all this path difference is equal to lambda. Okay, so this is very, very important point. Look at this. If now path difference, that is d sine theta is equal to lambda. If path difference is equal to lambda, then you will be getting a bright band. There's a dark band getting. You will be getting a dark band getting. Dark band. Dark band. Why dark band? Reason is what? See, whatever the width we have taken here, whatever the width we have taken here, right? This complete single slit width is to be assumed as two equal portions. See here, so this is the midpoint. This is taken as one portion. This is taken as one portion. And from this portion, some amount of light is reaching the point P. And from the second portion, some amount of light will be reaching. Okay, let's get the point P. These two lights are out of phase. There will be a phase difference 90 degrees. There will be a phase difference 90 degrees. Why 180 degrees? Why 180 degrees already phase difference, path difference, variation I have shown. So look at this, if at all, you take phase difference 2 by variance, that is, ah, that is corresponding to lambda, path difference. Am I correct? Yes or no? Okay, now this so here I have taken, from here to here lambda I have taken, then, so the first half becomes what? Lambda by 2. So lambda by 2 will become what? 5. 5 is what? 180 degrees. Lambda by 2 means what? 180 degrees. Understood? So here 180 degrees. One, that means here you see, this is 0 degrees. This is 180 degrees. And both the things will get cancelled out. Whenever the phase difference is 180 degrees, then what happens? Both the things will get cancelled out. Okay. So the intensity of light will be 0. Means no light will be reaching the point P. That means when the path difference between the S1 and S2, when the path difference is lambda, no light reaches the point P. So, which is huh, the formation of a dark band. Which is the formation of a dark band. Dark band formation takes place. Got it? Okay, so this is one condition. Next for that, so that becomes the first minima, secondary minima. So, this forms the first secondary minima. First secondary minima. First secondary minima. Okay, now second secondary minima we have to discuss. Second secondary minima means uh, the path difference has to be two lambda. 
when half the difference d sin theta then half the difference d sin theta is 2 lambda 2 lambda got it okay now what happens now 2 lambda now this complete width has to be taken in the form of four equal portions lambda by 2 lambda so 2 lambda lambda by 2 lambda by 2 lambda by 2 lambda by 2 each portion contributes some light over there each lambda by 2 is uh, in a phase difference of 90 degrees. Look at this. Okay, so here, four equal portions we have to measure. This is lambda by 2. This is lambda by 2. Lambda by 2, lambda by 2, get cancelled over. Next, lambda by 2, lambda by 2, get cancelled over. That means uh, there are four equal portions. Uh, out of these four equal portions, uh, no height is reaching the point P ultimately. Therefore, even in this case, P becomes a dark band. And what do we call that dark band? This dark band is a second, secondary minima. Second, secondary minima. Second, secondary minima. Next, third, secondary minima. So, how will we get? Second, this is third, secondary minima. So, when the half the difference in sign theta is equal to 3 lambda. 3 lambda. Then what happens? This complete single slit has to be imagined as 6 equal portions. Lambda by 2, lambda by 2, lambda by 2, lambda by 2, you can do more lambda by 2s. For the one even number. So ultimately, all these lambda by 2s will get cancelled out since the phase difference is 180 degrees. Therefore, when the path of difference between S1 and S2 is 3 lambda, in that case also, no light is reaching the point P ultimately. So that is the formation of dark band. What do we call that dark band? That is called the third secondary minima. Third secondary minima. Now, look at this. Okay. For all these secondary minima, what should be the path of difference now? So the path difference of here, d sin theta, lambda, 2 lambda, 3 lambda, and so on, n lambda, n lambda, got it? Okay, so this here you see, sin theta in this particular case, n lambda by d. And whatever point P I have taken, whatever all secondary minima I was discussing, all the things are above the central band. Not at all, this only above the central band that we have to discuss. No, same type of phenomenon takes place below the central band also. Below negative, above positive. Therefore, this sine theta can be written as a plus or minus. The sine theta is known as plus or minus. In the books, uh, you must have seen plus or minus. Plus or minus, 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 minus uh, n lambda by d. So, what is the sine theta? The sine theta is equal to angular width. This is called angular width. This is called angular width of secondary minima. Angular width of secondary minima. Angular width of secondary minima. Did you understand? Yes or no? Yes, okay, so here, this is some of the important things we have to keep in mind. So, to remember these results, what is that? The very first one is Fresnel's assumption. So, what did he tell? During in, there's a diffraction pattern, what happens? Interference of secondary wavelengths of the light which is unstopped. So, what do you mean by light unstopped? Look at this. Here you see. This is the light which is stopped. This is the light which is stopped. So, what about the light which is passing through in between S1 and S2? That becomes the light which is unstopped. That becomes the light which is unstopped. So, in this unstopped light, there will be so many secondary wavelengths. What about the secondary wavelengths that we come across? Ultimately, all those secondary wavelengths will undergo interference. Due to the interference of all these secondary wavelengths, we will be getting diffraction. That's what a personal. Okay. Understood? Okay. So, first secondary minima is observed when the path difference is lambda. Path difference means d sine theta. d sine theta is equal to lambda, which is the wavelength of light which is used. 
Okay, then what happens? Two portions we have to mention. Each portion is of width lambda by two. Lambda by two. Okay, the corresponding phase difference is 180 degrees. And the second lambda by two, the corresponding phase difference is 180. So this 180 degrees, 180 degrees, both of things will get cancelled out. Ultimately, as a result, no light will be reaching the point P. Therefore, the dark band formation is obtained. Therefore, the dark band formation is obtained. Understood? Okay, for the second, secondary minima. Hmm? What's happening, Sachin? Uh, so, this is the pro is reflecting uh, uh, some joke and all things uh, since uh, uh, five minutes uh, he is not able to control the law. Uh, with a great difficulty you are controlling. Uh, you tell me, uh, we will also laugh. Uh, very selfish fellow. Very selfish. Selfish means uh, whatever the thing he wants to want, he wanted to laugh. Uh, uh, so, he wants to keep that thing only within that fellow. But yeah, you tell us, we will laugh. No, no, no. Up to you, to all, you, including me. Hmm? But yeah, Sajid. Tell, tell, we will laugh. Laughing is very good for health. Huh? He said that only you have to laugh. What I wish? That's why he is very serious. Huh? That's why he is very serious. Huh? He is trying to tell to Sajid, but he is not listening. That is a problem. Huh? Price. Where you can see law? Where you can see law? What is Simply, huh? you see, there's a people laughing even without it. Huh? Reason. <laughs> even without reason, people laugh. Huh? Simply, people laugh. Even the thing also is a great boon. Boon means uh, that is something given by God. Is that correct? Yes or no? Huh? All people will laugh. Have that. Ability. Huh? With a great difficulty, we have to laugh. Huh? But that fellow, uh, without any effort, he is getting laugh. Such a huh? good, very good. Yes. First secondary minima, second secondary minima, what jewel? Jewel is not understanding great thing today. Jewel is not understanding. That's why there's a fun that he is This is not <laughs> What is yeah, Jewel? From the beginning, he is not understanding. That means Jewel sees whether I can understand or not. Ah, oh, yes, I can understand. He will be attentive to the If at all he thinks that ever this is something, or go out and leave it. Don't try to get headache. Huh? For Jewel? Yes, sir. No? Yes, sir. Understanding? Yes. Huh? No. <laughs> what is yeah? that? Yes, sir. No? No, oh, yes. <laughs> I can read the faces. Huh? I can read the faces. Okay, good. So before lunch itself, the circle is started. Huh? Dosing off. Huh? Okay, started. Okay, with a great difficulty, he is controlling, but not that much intensity. Okay, slightly, slowly begins. Because we just know any, uh, how many gate have been You didn't take. You didn't take. Somebody is not there? Pins <laughs> here, you that thing also is a kind of training. Yes, I know. If not, you go somewhere, there no chicken is available, no summer is available, no meat is available. How to use it? It's a kind of training. Yes, I know. Then you will come to know. Yes. Then we will be in proper translation. We have this practice. We had this practice. Am I correct, Maheshwari? Huh? Calculator. Yes or no? All kinds of things like that we have to take. Huh? Yes or no? But why this fellow did not have the question, he's, he, he's not understanding what I'm talking about. Huh? This fellow? Okay. Yes. Now we need to discuss something about the formation of bright acts. We need to discuss something about the formation of bright acts. Now look at this. Oh. Now, look at this. On the screen, with the point P, you need to have the bright band. So, bright band means maxima. Bright band means maxima. Maxima. So, maxima means, okay, first secondary maxima. First secondary maxima. First secondary maxima. 
So what is the condition for first to secondary maxima? So what about the path difference which is d sin theta? That d sin theta has to be equal to d sin theta. Look at this. Path difference. d sin theta should be equal to 3 lambda by 2. 3 lambda by 2. Okay. So 3 lambda by 2 means how many lambda by 2 can be taken? 3. Lambda by 2 is can be taken. Lambda by 2. Lambda by 2. Lambda by 2. That means this complete available switch. This you need to think of. Okay, three equal portions. Look at this. This is one equal portion. This is one more equal portion. So this is lambda by two. This is lambda by two. This is lambda by two. Right? Now this lambda by two portion contributes some y to get p. Next, the second lambda by two will be reaching. Okay. So the same points with the phase difference 180 degrees. So what about the portions of light reaching the point P from this first portion and second portion? These two things are out of phase. Out of phase means 180 degrees, opposite. So these two things will get cancelled. These two things will get cancelled. But what about the third one? Third one remains. Okay, there is nothing which is cancelling the third one. This third portion, lambda by 2, of light will be reaching the point 2. Are you getting the point? Okay, odd number of portions we have to take in the slit. When you take odd number of portions in the slit, what happens? Okay, these two things will get cancelled out. This will remain. This will survive. Okay, so this light will be reaching the point B. So, at point P, we will be getting a break back. At point P, we will be getting a break back. That is why you also break back formation. So, there is maximum. Okay, the first secondary maxima is obtained yet then ah, the path the difference of 3 lambda by 2. And in the same way, for second secondary maxima, second secondary maxima, second secondary maxima, the path the difference of d sin theta should be equal to 5 lambda by 2, not 4 lambda by 2. 4 lambda by 2 means, okay, again, that man will be the difference. But it is 5 lambda by 2. 5 lambda by 2 means those lambda by 2 portions of 5. Such portions we need to imagine. 5 such portions we need to imagine. Okay, out of those 5, 4 portions will get cancelled. The fifth portion survives. But the point? Okay, so this in the first maxima, look at this. In the first secondary maxima, okay, so third lambda by 2 is surviving. In the second secondary maxima, Fifth lambda by two is surviving. Are you getting the pattern? Yes. Okay, so this is the third lambda by two. This is fifth lambda by two. So what do you understand by means of these two things? Intensity decreases. Its intensity is less than that. The third lambda by two light will be brighter. That means the first secondary maxima is somewhat brighter. More maximum brightness means the center. But when, okay, of the central maxima, okay, the first secondary maxima will be somewhat less brighter. Next, second say second secondary maxima, still more dull. Dim. Not the matter. Okay, so like this. Next, so third and secondary maxima, you probably discuss. Third secondary maxima. Third secondary maxima. You probably talk about. So the path difference that is a design theta is equal to 7 lambda by 2. 7 lambda by 2. 7 lambda by 2. So out of the 7 lambda by 2, 6 lambda by 2 will get cancelled out. Only 7 lambda by 2 survives. It is a small portion. It is a small portion. Okay, intensity further decreases. Intensity further decreases. All these things are secondary maxima. Secondary maxima. Now, in general, how do you say? So, what is the condition for the formation of secondary maxima? So, the path of the which is d sin theta is equal to 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2. So, this must be the condition for the formation of brain back. Okay, so once again, I conclude what is that in this single split experiment, diffraction pattern for the formation of dark band. Formation of dark band, path the difference has to be n lambda. Formation of bright band, path the difference has to be 2n plus 1 lambda by 2. 
just one minute keep this one aside again you just recapitulate young's double cell experiment in that formation of right band formation of right band n lambda that n lambda here dark band see confusion arises but the in Young's double slit experiment, Young lambda is the path difference for the formation of right angle. Whereas, coming to this diffraction phenomenon, same Young lambda is becoming the formation for in the double. So, Young's double slit experiment, 2n plus 1 lambda by 2. Do you remember? So, that will be the path difference for the formation of dark matter. Same 2n plus 1 lambda by 2 in this case uh, is the path difference for the formation of uh, right. Okay, here, okay, people will be using the wrong formula while doing the problems. Understood? So, here, what is angular separation? In this case, angular separation. So, this is 2n plus 1 into lambda or 2d. This becomes the angular separation. This becomes an angular separation. Right? Now, intensity chart, we need to discuss. Over this one. Can I erase this? This one. Okay. So, intensity chart, we need to discuss. So, what do you mean by intensity chart? What do you mean by intensity chart? On the screen, overall, as per the intensity, is how we are going to have this maxima. Primary maxima, secondary maxima, all of these. Look at this. This is a screen. This is a screen. And what about the central brain band that we are going to get that spreads to some area? So look at this here. This becomes the central maxima. This becomes the central maxima. Okay. So next, this is secondary minima. Secondary maxima. Second, so, so second, secondary minimum. Next, like this. Second, second, they get faded away. They get faded away. Faded. So, in your textbooks or reference books, so did you ever see this diagram in that section? So people who open the book and the people who see the book, that's the name of the you didn't see this, sir? The things of textbook reading and the books reading, this the, the habit, habit is not there. Huh? Okay. Did you see this, sir? Yes. Girls have seen it. Very good. Okay. Good. Good girls. Good. Right? Okay. So this is like this. Understood? That is. That is. You see what is it? Second year or first year? Huh? Volume one or volume two? Ah, that, that are the, so this figure is not there. Ah. Understood? So this, this is uh, the diffraction phenomenon. This is the diffraction pattern. Okay, so in this uh, we will come across all these things. So all these things you need to keep in mind. I am telling you, while solving the problem, ultimately you are going to use this formula. That is then lambda. Ah, okay, so 2 m lambda. Okay, so like this lambda. Uh, 2 lambda, 3 lambda. Okay, in the problem, he may ask what will be the condition for the 10th secondary maxima? You need to estimate. What will be the condition for the 5th secondary minima? Understood? So, like this. Right? Okay, so the appropriate equation you have to use on the spot without wasting time. When will it be possible for you? When will that be more and more effective? When you are aware of this. Understand? When you are aware of this, then only you will be you will be close. But it looks like this. It is getting a lot like nothing else. Something, 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 something cooking is happening. Huh? What here? Huh? Nothing. Huh? Okay. But just like an uh, excited electron. Huh? Just like an excited electron, he is. Huh? The electron goes to higher energy level. Huh? From E1 to E2. Huh? Again, from E2 to E1, the electron jumps back. Huh? What such a? Ah, okay, like this. Now, let's get this answer to Soba. Now, coming to the next concept, which is coming to the next concept, which is polarization. 
Okay, so with the polarization which happens in the lower, then we can conclude. So what do you mean by polarization? Can I erase this? Huh? Okay, so polarization. Polarization. Right. So polarization is a phenomenon which was not explained by Huygens Bentley. Okay, why couldn't Huygens explain polarization? This is what we have to think of. Why couldn't Huygens explain polarization? This is what we have to think of. Why did he so why couldn't he explain? Because Huygens, okay, wave theory is of longitudinal mass. As long as you depend on longitudinal wave nature, this polarization phenomenon cannot be explained at all. In the early 19th century, I told you Maxwell. Maxwell, so he developed electromagnetics. Right? After Michelson and Morley's experiments, Maxwell came to the conclusion that light waves are nothing but electromagnetics. By means of that, he disproved the existence of longitudinal waves in the light. Maxwell propounded that the light is nothing but electromagnetic waves which are of transverse by nature. Transverse nature. Transverse nature. Got it? Okay. So in the transverse nature, okay. So two types of electric the fields are oscillating. One is oscillating electric field, and the second one is oscillating magnetic field. Ultimately, the light wave propagation can be shown like this. Okay, so this is the x-axis you take, and this is the y-axis you take, and z-axis will be perpendicular to this. If electric field vector oscillates in xy plane like this, this is electric field vector. Electric field vector like this. This is electric field which is oscillating. At any time, the intensity of this electric field vector is given as E is equal to E naught sine omega t plus phi. So this is what the instantaneous electric field. Instantaneous electric field. Right? So there is sinusoidally. Sinusoidally means there is a function of sine. Sine function. And in the same way, magnetic field, this is E. Okay, magnetic field will be oscillating like this. This is the way how the magnetic field oscillates. Perpendicular in this. The field is in YZ plane. In YZ plane. So this is magnetic field vector like this. Okay, so magnetic field vector, which is V. This is electric field vector, that is here. Yeah, so E. So magnetic field vector. So that is V naught the sine omega T plus phi. This is the representation of oscillating magnetic field. This is a representation of oscillating magnetic field. Right? Electric field, since it is passing through a medium, the medium's electric property we have to take. So medium's electric property is a permittivity of air or free space. Okay, so magnetic field is also passing through a medium. Then magnetic property of the medium we have to take. Which is nothing but the permeability of air or free space. Permeability, mu naught, permittivity, epsilon naught. Permeability is the magnetic property of the medium. Permittivity is the electrical property of the given medium. Now, by means of this, the so the velocity of the electromagnetic wave, in this case, velocity of light, how do you write? How do you write? One by under root mu naught into epsilon naught. So this is the equation given by Maxwell. If at all you replace this air or vacuum with any other medium, that particular medium will be having something different, permittivity and permeability. Match the medium's permittivity is epsilon, medium's permeability is a mu, okay, then the velocity of light in that particular medium, how do you write one by under root mu into epsilon. Understood? So all these things. Okay, in one of the previous CET papers, this was asked. Understood? Okay, C is equal to 1 by under root mu and epsilon. Mu is a permeability, means magnetic property. Epsilon means that is a permittivity, which is electrical property. Which is electrical property. Okay. Now we have to get back to our primary observation. 
At the beginning of chapter, I told you one thing. What is that? Sense of vision. Okay, now if it are the light waves are of this electromagnetic waves in which electric field vector is oscillating and a magnetic field vector is also oscillating. In these two fields, which field is responsible for the sense of vision? In these two fields, that is electric field and magnetic field, which field is responsible for the sense of vision? Electric field is responsible for sense of vision. Because already I told you, everything, everything is studied by brain, by electrical signals. So, in these two fields, the electric field is responsible for the sensation of vision. Got it? Okay. Magnetic field for time being, we can ignore. Okay. So, electric field is passing like this. Look at this electric field alone, if you don't make, then a light beam is passing. So, this becomes electric field. This becomes electric field. Got it? Okay, now you tell me one thing. So there's a beam of light. Beam of light. Now look at me. So there's a, I am looking at some light. Some beam of light is, okay, that's a entering my eye. In that beam, there will be so many light waves. Millions and billions of light waves will be present in that beam of light. Got the point? So in each ray, okay, this type of oscillations, in each ray, there will be millions and billions of light waves, microscopically. And in those waves, so these electric fields will be oscillating. Got it? Okay. What about these electric fields? In what directions do they oscillate? In what directions do they oscillate? In multiple directions, they will be oscillating. Look at this. Here you see. Now you are looking at okay, the ball. Now from behind, one beam of light is entering okay, towards you like this. One beam of light is entering like this. One beam of light. Okay, so in this beam of light, in this beam of light, okay, so there will be so many oscillations. Okay, so some directed fields will be in this direction, some directed fields will be in this direction, some directed fields will be in this direction, some directed fields will be in this direction. Okay, so this in this beam of light. Okay, so there will be directed fields which will be oscillating in multiple directions. There will be some oscillations which are in this direction. There will be some oscillations which are confined in this plane. There will be some okay oscillations like this. There will be some oscillations like this. By doing so, what happens? The complete that the energy that is light energy is spread. Not the mind. So this type of light usually is known as unpolarized light. This type of light is known as unpolarized light. Unpolarized light, we see. Unpolarized light. And what do you mean by polarization? Polarization means uh, that is the process in which uh, we have to restrict all unwanted vibrations, unwanted oscillations. All these oscillations are to be confined in a particular plane. All these oscillations are to be confined in a particular plane. Then that is called polarization. That is called polarization. I will tell you an example. I will tell you an example. Okay, so look at this. Here you see. Look at this. Okay, so here just a try to visualize the example that I am telling. See here, let's put this one. I just okay, that's a fixed one hook. Like this, I just fix. I will be taking one rope. In that rope, I will just tie. Okay, tie. Tight. Okay, now take the second end. Take the second end. Now what I do is okay, stiff. Keep it stiff. Rope. Right. Okay, now let's give I give the jack vertically. Like this, I have given the jack. Like this, I have given the jack. If I just give the jack, then okay, so in the vertical direction, then immediately what happens? You will be getting a wave, okay, passing in the same direction. So that is vertical wave. Okay, you observe how the wave goes. Now, so bring it stationary. Now, you give horizontal jack. Horizontal jack, you give. Then immediately, so the horizontal wave goes. Right? Now, not like this. Okay. So in multiple directions, you keep swinging. Like this. This, uh, this, uh, this, uh, multiple directions. And then what happens now? What happens now? Okay. The, so ultimately, even this rope will be vibrating. How does the wave, does the rope, the rope vibrate? In multiple directions. You are in a kind of 
The waves will be there in multiple directions. And whatever the waves which are passing in the multiple directions, that can be taken as unpolarized. Okay, there's a waves. Unpolarized waves. Unpolarized waves. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, unpolarized waves. Okay, now let's look at this again, you see. Now what I do is, I will be taking this type of plank. One plank I will take. Imagine. Okay, same example. One plank I will take. Now, I will just cut the over here. Just like a slit, I will make it. I will remove this. Then open it. Rectangular opening. Imagine. Rectangular opening. I made slit. Now, I will be taking the rope. Now, through this opening, I pass this. Very narrow. This is very narrow. Imagine. Right? Now, by keeping this like this, by keeping like this, so like this, okay, what kind of wave can I okay, pass? If I vibrate in the vertical direction, vertical direction means parallel to the slit. The slit is in the vertical direction. Now, whatever the wave that I am producing, the wave also has to be produced parallel to the slit. Then what happens? The wave will be propagated. And how will the wave propagate? So through this, because the slit and the wave formation is also the same direction. So the wave passes outside. Okay, now just by holding like this, horizontally, I, this, okay, I give the jerk. I produce a wave. Then horizontal wave is passing like this, but here this will be stopping. And this side, if you don't, you see, okay, the rope is stationary. Because whatever the horizontal wave which is coming up to here, this horizontal wave is not able to pass through the switch. And this side, there is no horizontal wave. The means, what is this? It's a stopper. It's a stopper. Are you getting my point? Okay, so this is here. This is the example that I have told. Okay, did you understand this example? Even in the case of polarization, also the same thing happens. And whatever unpolarized light which is coming like this, uh, all these things are electrical vibrations. Now, to stop these electrical vibrations, uh, how I am using the stopper like that, you will be using the stopper. That stopper is called polarizer. There are some natural polarizers which are known as polaroids, which are known as polaroids. That fellow went huh? in Samadhi state. Huh? Okay, hold on. We get down. We get down. Huh? Right. Meditation. Meditation? <laughs> no, sir. I am not sleeping. I am meditating. Huh? <laughs> huh? I am meditating. What explanation? I'm that fellow you say like this. I am from the beginning, I am meditating, sir. <laughs> from the beginning, I am meditating. Huh? Yes. Right. Okay, so this is here you see. So this is polarized. Polarized means natural polarizers. Natural polarizers. Okay, now this is, this is unpolarized light. So polarized light will be how? So in any one direction, all the vibrations are restricted. So if you want to take the vertical, so this is here. This is a polar, this is a polarized, polarized light. Otherwise, the polarized light will also be horizontal like this. Right? Okay, what is the symbolic representation? What is the symbolic representation? So look at this here, if at all the light is unpolarized. So this is the symbolic representation like this. In all the possible directions, you will show you. If at all any light is represented like this, okay, in this beam, in this beam, all the electrical vibrations are in multiple directions, which is unpolarized. Now, polarized light means like this you need to show. Ah. Like this, you can show just like it out. Okay, so this is actual. Okay, there is a symbol for unpolarized light. Ultimately, light is passing like this. Okay, so these are vertical vibrations and horizontal vibrations. Vertical vibrations and horizontal vibrations. Vertical vibrations and horizontal vibrations. And both the things are together. This is unpolarized. The dots indicate this type of vibrations. This indicates the this type of vibrations. Understood? The combination of these two directions of vibrations, when you take, this becomes unpolarized light. Next, the symbolic representation of a polarized light is like this. This is the computation of light wave. Now, you just show like this. 
no doors. That is polar, polarized light. That is a simple thing. Otherwise, you can show like this. This is the direction of propagation of light wave. So you show it. That's it. And so give this thing also polarized. This is unpolarized. Are you clear with this point? Is that all? Okay, now this, I told you some natural polarizers are there. Okay, so there are some crystals over here in the nature. What are they? Tourmaline crystals. Tourmaline crystals. Tourmaline crystals. Tourmaline crystals. Okay, so the tourmaline crystal is a special kind of crystal. It's a natural polarizer that is called polaroid. And what is the shape of this tourmaline crystal? These tourmaline crystals are found in the hexagonal shape. In the core, so tourmaline crystal, so there will be some invisible openings, microscopical. Through those openings, light enters. Means, okay, the vibrations which are parallel with those openings, only those vibrations will be able to pass. The vibrations which are in other directions of the openings, they cannot pass. Okay, so look at this. Here you see, this is the source of light. Now, so this unpolarized light is passing like this. Unpolarized light, I am showing like this. So these are multiple vibrations I am showing. Multiple vibrations I am showing like this. This is unpolarized light. It's passing in this direction. Imagine. Tourmaline crystal, crystal so beautiful like this. This is the way how tourmaline crystal so has to be shown like this. This is a tourmaline crystal like this. Hexagonal shape. Hexagonal shape like this. This is a tourmaline crystal. This is tourmaline crystal. Okay, so this is the thickness. This is the thickness of the crystal. Crystal means that there will be some systematic array now. Array means uh, ah, so systematic shape, right? Okay, so there will be some microscopical opening signals. <coughs> so those things uh, with the light rays we can see. What it so far? Okay, visibility just like a normal crystal, it appears, it looks like. Got the point? Okay, the moment the light enters through this crystal, this is called polarizer. This is called polarizer. Polarizer. Right? This is called polarizer. So the moment, so these things enter over here. What happens in these multiple vibrations of electric fields, the electric field vectors, the electric field vectors which are parallel with these openings, only those electric field vectors will be passing through the coronal crystal. Through the coronal crystal. Therefore, what happens over here? So polarized light is coming out of this. Even this polarized light will not be visible to us. And with our naked eye, when you observe both unpolarized and polarized, both things look like look alike. Right? But how to identify that this light is polarized? For the purpose, one more turbulent crystal we have to use that is called the analyzer. That is called the analyzer. Okay, so you know what I said, you put on, you put one more tourmaline crystal over here like this. Look at this, this is, this is another tourmaline crystal. This is another tourmaline crystal. And if you put on, this tourmaline crystal is placed parallel with this, then what happens? What about the electrical vibrations which are passing, all these electrical vibrations will be just passing through. Then the light is obtained. Okay, this side. Then the light is obtained this side. Light and if at all the alignment of this analyzer changes. Now then what happens? So look at this here. You see. Look at this here. You see. So this is okay. Polarizer. Right. So this here. What about the light which is passing?